So you wanna make passive income, but you don't have a lot of money to spend. Well, that's okay, lucky for you. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a strategy where you only need to start out with around $100 and you can make up to about 20% per week. Welcome back to Everything Options. My name is Greg and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use out of the money credit spreads in order to generate weekly passive income. So to break this video down for you, first we're gonna go over the basics of the strategy covering everything you need to know about it. Then I'm gonna talk about the risks that are associated with it because with any strategy, you can always lose money. And finally, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a real example that you'll definitely wanna stick around for. But before we get into it, if you learn anything out of this video or if you just enjoy it, make sure to leave a like down below. And if you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments. Thanks. With a credit spread, what you're gonna do is you're going to be buying and you're going to be selling options of the same type on the same expiration date. And you can either do a call credit spread by buying and selling a call with different strike prices, or you can do a put credit spread by buying and selling puts with separate strike prices, again, on the same expiration date. And whenever you sell a put credit spread, your assumption is that the stock price is going to be above the strike prices on your expiration date. So you can be either neutral or you can be bullish with a put credit spread. And when it comes to a call credit spread, you're betting on the stock being below your strike prices. So you can either be neutral or you can be bearish. Since these options are starting out of the money, this gives you a great chance of actually turning a profit and coming away with your max profit, which is just going to be the credit that you receive whenever you open these trades. And whenever you open one of these credit spreads, you need to make sure positively that you are getting a credit in order to open the trade. Because if you buy and you sell an option and you're paying a debit for that trade, if you're paying out of pocket to open that, then you have the exact opposite assumption than you would with a credit spread because that's called a debit spread and that is for an entirely different video. And to get a little more specific, whenever it comes to put credit spreads versus call credit spreads with a put credit spread, you're gonna start out by selling a put option that you think the stock price is going to be above, then you're going to buy a put option with a lower strike price. And the amount that you're putting down for your trade is gonna depend on the difference between your strike prices. So if you sold a 100 put, thinking that the stock's gonna be above 100, and then you bought, say, a 99 put, you would only have to put down $100 of collateral since the difference between the two strike prices is $1. You multiply that by the 100 shares that each option controls, and you only have $100 of collateral. And then with a call credit spread, you're betting on the stock being below your strike prices. So if we sold a $100 call, we're betting on the stock being below $100 by our expiration date. So we would sell that $100 call, and then we would buy back a 101 or higher call against that. And the whole reason why you're buying and you're selling two different options is to bring down the amount of money that you have to put down for your trade. Again, we only have to put down $100 of collateral for each of these trades, where if we were to just sell a regular call or put at $100 strike price, we would need $10,000 to put on these trades. Obviously, with a small account, we don't have that type of money. So now that we cover the strike prices and which ones to buy, which ones to sell, we got that out of the way, let's talk about the expiration date, another key factor. Now, you can either do weekly options, which is a very viable strategy, but a little more intense, a little more involved, or you can also do monthly call options with 30 to about 45 days until expiration. Now, this video is a little bit more focused on weekly passive income, so we're gonna be using weekly options, but I just wanted to let you know that there are other options out there, no pun intended, to where you can have a more hands-off approach to trading options and making passive income. Anyway, so we're missing out on one more thing, in the money versus out of the money. So we wanna start out of the money because we want our options to expire out of the money and when we start with an out of the money put option or call option, we give ourselves a better chance of that option staying out of the money. There's a lot greater chance of the option staying out of the money than going from in the money to out of the money. And we're gonna put this deep out of the money. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can either add or subtract 10% to the current share price, which is the easy way, or you can do it the nerdy way by going with delta values. And the delta values that I personally like to use whenever I'm using deep out of the money credit spreads is 10 to about a 20 delta. And this just means that there is about a 10 to a 20% chance of these options expiring in the money. That means either one in five or one in 10 trades you're going to lose and then the other four or eight trades, 
you're gonna win. So since we have a good chance of this option experiencing max profit, we gotta talk about how much the max profit would actually be, which is just going to be the amount of credit that you receive whenever you open these trades. This means, for example, if I get $25 of credit in order to open my trade, that is going to be my maximum profit. That's the most amount of money that I can make on this trade. But it's not all rainbows and sunshine. You can also lose money too because, again, there's still a 10 to about a 20% chance of these options expiring in the money and taking on max loss. And with that $25 credit, if we were to take on, say, a $1 spread, we'd be putting up $100 of collateral and our max loss will be equal to that $100 of collateral minus the $25 of credit that we received for a maximum loss on this trade of $75. And the best part about this strategy, as long as you don't hold it into the expiration date, which we'll talk about later, is that this strategy is limited risk. You can only put in what you're willing to lose on your trade. So if I have $75 that I'm putting up as my maximum loss, that is the most amount of money I can lose, unless, of course, I hold this into the expiration date. And if the stock is between my two strike prices on the expiration date, that's where we can run into a little bit of trouble. Now, this is why it's always important to close out of your spreads before they expire, but if you hold them and the stock is between your two strike prices on your expiration date, what's gonna happen, you're gonna be exercised on the option that you bought for your spread, and then you're not going to be assigned on the option you sold in your spread. So this means that you're either going to have to buy or sell 100 shares of your stock at whatever strike price that you chose for the option that you bought. So if you bought a $100 call, you would agree to buy 100 shares of a stock at $100 for a total of $10,000. And if you don't have that type of money, your account's going to be in a $10,000 deficit. But if you bought a put option, you agreed to sell 100 shares at $100. And if you don't have 100 shares of that stock, then your brokerage is gonna come knocking on your door asking for the shares because you're gonna be short on 100 shares of a stock. And being short on 100 shares of a stock has infinite risk potential, which you don't wanna run into. Again, this is a limited risk strategy as long as you close your spreads before they expire. I can't stress this enough. And now that we covered the biggest risk whenever it comes to the spread strategy, let's get into an actual example to really nail this down for you. The stock that I'm gonna be using for the strategy is gonna be AMD. And there's no real rhyme or reason behind it. I just think that AMD is a good stock. I have a $150 price target on it. So we're gonna bet on AMD stock going up and we're gonna do this with put options. So make sure you have put options selected at the top if you're bullish on the stock. And then we're going to find an option with a negative 0.2 delta. So this 130 put has a negative 0.22 delta. So it's close enough. You can really aim for anything between 18 and 22 delta, and you'll probably get around the same results. So we're going to sell this 130 put option to open it. So this means that we're betting on AMD stock being above $130 by our expiration date on November 12th. But we don't have enough money to buy 100 shares of AMD stock at $130. That would cost us $13,000 in order to put on this trade. So what we're going to do next is we're going to buy a put option with the lower strike price and to put the least amount of money down, you wanna go with the closest strike price, which in this case is going to be the 129 strike price. And for this trade, we're gonna get $21 in credit for only $100 of collateral. So we're putting down $100 and we're getting $21 in return for a 21% return in a week if AMD stock stays above our $130 strike price on my expiration of November 12th. But of course, we can lose money too. So if AMD stock is below my 129 strike price on our expiration date, then we can lose as much as $79 on this trade, which is equal to the distance between the two strike prices, $1 times 100 shares, minus the $21 of credit for a maximum loss of $79. And then you also have the hairy situation of holding this option into the expiration date. And if AMD were to be between 129 and 130 on your expiration date, since you bought a put option and that option would be in the money, you would be agreeing to sell 100 shares of AMD stock at $129. And odds are you probably don't have 100 shares of AMD stock to sell at $129 if you're using a small account. And if you wanna learn how to close this, it's pretty simple. All you're gonna do is sell the 129 put, just like you would regularly, and then you're going to buy to close the 130 put, 
that we sold to open. So basically you're just doing the opposite to how you open the option whenever we sold the 130 put and bought the 129 put. And that's pretty much all you need to know about this strategy. Hopefully you learned something out of this video and you get to make some money out of it. Thanks for making it all the way to the end and thank you to all my patrons for the support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.